Hey everyone, welcome to the Cyberman Show. Today is the monthly recap for March of 2025. And we're going to talk about major cyber incidents that happened in March, cyber security M&As, uh, TTPs and how threat actors are behaving. I'll also talk about some of the reports that I've looked into, top vulnerabilities that are getting exploited in the wild, and finally, my view of what happened in March and some of the lessons that I've learned. Thank you. With that, let's get started. So in terms of the uh, major cybersecurity incident, the most interesting has been the ongoing Oracle cloud breach. Uh, around 6 million records were exposed uh, as per the actor with the handle Rose 87168. The actor stated that he breached an Oracle cloud login and listed 6 million user records for sale. The data included SSO LDAP details and Java key store files and uh, put, it potentially impacted 140,000 tenants on the Oracle cloud. And uh, Oracle eventually acknowledged the bre data breach and started informing its affected clients after some time. Now, the method that the attacker used is uh, something which is outdated. It's the Oracle Fusion Middleware 11G specific vulnerability. Uh, the confirmed reports are still not there. I think it's going to take some time before the exact uh, investigation comes out and tells us what happened. But what is important to understand is that people are still using unpatched software in, in their own enterprise. And uh, of course, the potential exposure in cloud authentication system. And uh, what I would recommend is you should always have monitoring of your cloud infrastructure in terms of activity as well as the posture. And patch, of course, is a basic cybersecurity hygiene. In the next news, a threat actor claimed that he was able to hack Checkpoint, a security company. and. Uh, he also claimed that sensitive data was exposed. This actor goes by the handle core injection. So this person uh, advertised the data set allegedly stolen from Checkpoint. The actor claimed that the data included network maps, user credentials, employee contracts, and source code. Screenshot was also shown uh, from a uh, uh, Checkpoint admin portal. Now Checkpoint stated that this is an old limited event from December involving compromised credential for a portal with restricted access. Essentially, they acknowledged the breach, but they said there was no impact on uh, the customers and it's, the data is outdated. In terms of the how it happened, Checkpoint stated that the root cause was because of abuse of compromised credentials for a portal account with limited access. The actor gained access to some account names, contact names for three customers and some employee emails. And it's important to realize that uh, what actor is saying versus what company is saying is, is a bit different. And also, uh, investigations have to be properly done. Uh, I Honestly, uh, it would have been better if Checkpoint knew of the attack and uh, notified their customers proactively. In the next one, uh, GitHub Actions uh, workflow called TJ Actions uh, change file was compromised. So essentially, for those who don't know what GitHub Actions is, it's a feature that GitHub uh, that allows you to automate tasks and processes related to a software development lifecycle. So you typically define workflows um, in a YAML file within the GitHub repository and specify the steps that get executed when certain events have occur. Example, push to a branch or a pull request, and this entire uh, uh, GitHub uh, action repo was compromised. So th this action runs o in over 23,000 repositories and this malicious code extracted CICD secrets from environments. Uh, and these secrets could appear in the public log. In fact, uh, one of the targeted customers from the initial attack was uh, mentioned as Coinbase, a very popular platform. Uh, now, this is a typical uh, so supply chain attack if you've been a listener of this podcast, you might be noticing that I've mentioning software supply chain attacks multiple times in the last few years. Of course, the occurrence is increased and uh, it's important to uh, understand your CICD pipeline, your software supply chain, your 
software bill of materials so validate dependencies manage secrets securely and keep rotating them right so i have a full scale cyber security best practices if in place if you are developing uh, softwares from using third party components which most of us do lastly on the cyber security news side uh, the uh, ukraine railway was impacted by a cyber attack the U and it's the ukraine national railway uh, so this impacted their online services including ticketing the service went offline for a few days the train operations uh, were not impacted because they were using backup system and the railways blamed uh, an enemy uh, the ukrainian government stated that the attack employed tactics techniques and procedures that showed characteristics of russian intelligence services and cyber criminal criminals utilize unique malware designed with infrastructure specific in mind now this is interesting so there are targeted malware that have we, have we have seen in decades that are designed to disrupt particular system that we typically don't think of so critical infrastructure is very important uh, it has to be secure a lot of governments are working to include the cyber security of critical infrastructure in their national policies i but it's you know you can always do more and much execute much faster okay with that let's move on to the uh, the mna section so i'm sure you all know google acquired wiz a very popular cna platform uh, google aims to boost its cloud security services so google is not a very popular uh, cyber security vendor they are of course known for their end user services we all use google products in our regular life as well as their cloud infrastructure okay but this will add to their current security capabilities beyond chronicle and their sore platform essentially <coughs> google chronicle secops uh, and uh, it seems google wants to compete better with aws and azure uh, and of course with existing uh, large cyber security players like palo alto cloud cloud strike and zscaler uh, and the amount of money that they paid is 32 billion uh, so this is a good move it's going to make it very competitive to my view uh, what i don't understand is you know how viz is going to keep themselves with agnox techs uh, once they become part of google in in some time right so today they are agnostic they work across multiple clouds but what happens after viz is completely a part of google moving on Arm is a, a very popular OT security company. Acquired another company called Otorio. Uh, this is their third acquisition in uh, last twelve months, and uh, they are expanding their uh, core platform and have added this capability for uh, uh, cyber physical security. So very interesting use case that they are covering. Also, Veron is a very popular data security company. They acquired Cyril. Uh, that's a database activity monitoring platform. So I. they are building a full scale data security data monitoring capability uh, for both structured and unstructured data jamf an another company very popular for uh, its uh, apple uh, device management capabilities uh, they acquired a company called identity automation uh, and uh, the goal is to unify solution linking devices uh, access device access and identity okay and so essentially it means that endpoint management and identity management are merging this allows more integrated access control for all jamf customers lastly solarwinds acquires quadcast uh, quadcast uh, will give a capability to solarwinds on uh, observability platform uh, with automated response so and that's pretty in, uh, interesting i am seeing lot of activity around observability space as you can imagine uh, things are more active in in terms of connectivity more apps are coming on online ai wave is going to only make it uh, uh, more okay more you will see more apps and various form factors uh, and which means any security team or enterprise application team they will need more observability in terms of what's happening in their infrastructure so that's that's why i said in the beginning that it's a very interesting move from observability capability perspective mm -hmm. let's look into how uh, the attackers are behaving so uh, uh, russia state sponsored uh, group is exploiting uh, windows sh uh, shortcut zero day 
So essentially, what this actor is doing, they are sending phishing emails with malicious .lnk files, and these files have hidden commands, and they deliver mal malware, and they can bypass some uh, of the tools, and it's targeting sectors like government, telecom, and research. Of course, you can patch Windows, uh, and you can use an EDR to spot suspicious LNK file uh, command execution and uh, train your users about this risk. Uh, and then two specific companies, Zyxel so, and Fortinet are getting targeted by different groups. So China Nexus is targeting Zyxel home routers for initial access, then they deploy uh, in-memory web shell for stealth, and they use Terlink for persistence. And essentially these are routers used at home, and they are, they are uh, get targeting specific companies that provide those routers in telecom side. And uh, what I recommend is securing these devices and monitoring what's happening. Look into your traffic, look into your log, who's connecting, what's the kind of traffic that's going. Also, uh, on the Fortinet device side, a ransomware called uh, Super Black, they are targeting specific Fortinet firewall vulnerabilities that allows them to uh, gain I mean, access for ransomware deployment, okay? And they're targeting uh, the vulnerable Fortinet devices worldwide, okay? So please patch your Fortinet devices. Uh, it's a cybersecurity company, uh, and if you're using those software, make sure they're patched, okay? And of course, you should monitor. In terms of the must-read report, which is the next section, these are very interesting reports that I found. One, the Dragos OTC uh, cybersecurity report, the eighth annual edition, from Dragos, this report focuses on identifying ransomware trends that impact ICS systems and OT technology in 2024. And the key insight that I found was that ransomware attacks on industrial firm rose 87% in 2024. It was hit the hardest, and these attacks caused operational disruption. So as manufacturing sites are getting connected, smart manufacturing, industry 4.0, whatever you want to call, call it, to improve efficiency in the manufacturing side to for modernization there is a lot of leg, legacy tech debt there so comp in these comp a lot of these companies are upgrading their con con systems making them connected and that's when you know these cyber incidents happen uh, secondly uh, the CISA and FBI joint advisory was published on Medusa ransomware so uh, this report gave details on Medusa ransomware as a service. This service uh, impacted over uh, 300 critical infrastructure organizations, and it uses double and triple extortion. Uh, so typically, ransomware has encryption as first technique. Second, it what cyber criminals do, they can exfiltrate or steal the file before encrypting, and then they can blackmail, which becomes double ex uh, extortion. And triple is when they reach out to your clients or the you know the victims clients to pressurize them to release the payments right so triple extortion is also getting common and a lot of companies do it for you know to prevent themselves from public shaming uh, you know and then uh, so this advisory came out and lastly uh, signia research published a report on uh, weaver and uh, uh, threat actor and this is essentially the same thing that I spoke about. This is the group that's targeting the Zyxel uh, home routers. Okay, so uh, uh, there are groups of companies or groups of people who are targeting some of these are sponsored, otherwise they have financial gains as motive in their mind. Make sure you're monitoring everything in your personal devices side as well as your infrastructure. Now, Next section is all about top vulnerabilities getting exploited in the wild. And I know, there are, I know that there are thousands of vulnerabilities re getting reported every day, but I want to mention some of the things that are very actively getting exploited so that you're aware. One is the vulnerability, the IVNT, uh, Connect Secure, Policy Secure, ZTA Gateways. This uh, vulnerability allows potential uh, uh, system compromise. The second vulnerability that's getting exploited is on the Fortinet OS that allows authentication bypass, which means super admin privilege can be gained. Uh, well, also vulnerability in the crush FTP software that allows uh, unauthenticated port access that can lead to file access. And another vulnerability are on uh, VMware ASXI workstation that allows uh, VM escape. So these are uh, 
things that are there. A lot of them have patches. So please go ahead and monitor, uh, keep track of the vulnerabilities uh, around the products that you have. Make sure you have an inventory of the products and make sure our products are always patched. Now, lastly, I want to tell you what, what's my view, right, around this, especially on the, if you look at the Viz acquisition, I've, I've said it before, it's interesting what's going to happen a year from now when the acquisition gets completed. Uh, but $32 billion is a big amount, uh, interesting day for cybersecurity. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, you know, Viz, technolo Viz technology has been amazing. I don't know their revenues because it's not a public company. But uh, $32 billion is a large amount. Okay. Uh, also, new vulnerabilities will keep coming in. Uh, things like usage of .lnk files. And attackers will always find zero days. Okay. And uh, they will, in some cases, bypass also. It happens. Next, supply chain is a target. The, the GitHub action compromise proves this. So ensure that you are checking your third-party components, use software uh, configuration, composition analysis tools, look, configure, look at configuration analysis tools also from your cloud infrastructure perspective. Your edge devices will be getting targeted. So mentioned example of Zyxel, Fortinet, Ivanti, you know, your firewalls, router, VPN firewalls, and, and all, they all need patching continuously. Okay. And ransomware is still continuing non-stop. Non Medusa is hitting the critical infrastructure hard. They are leveraging new vulnerabilities and OT systems are also at risk. Okay. So patch aggressively, manage your cloud security posture, verify your supply chain, defend your devices, phishing and malware, target them often and prepare for more AI-based attacks in defense. Uh, so that was it for the day and for the month of March. I'm going to uh, release some new content uh, soon, mostly around AI cybersecurity. A very interesting podcast with a great product uh, company, great builder uh, is going to come up soon, just before RSA conference. So keep in your uh, eyes open. Keep looking out at uh, the podcast. So enable notifications, share it with your friends if you like the content, give me feedback, so that helps. So with that, thank you so much, I'll see you next time.